Welcome back to LCP Digital Learning Channel. Today I'm with Jeremy Wagner. And our second part of this series, we're gonna be going through how to set up their own test. Exactly, so I'm gonna show you how to get into Eduphoria and actually create an assessment. Awesome, let's jump right in. To create an assessment, you'll log into Eduphoria and then access Aware. And then from here, you wanna make sure you go to the Assessment tab. Normally it defaults to the Analyze tab, so make sure you go to the Assessment tab. Once you're on the assessment tab, you'll have an option partway down the screen here that says create a new teacher test. Select that option. Now there are two types of tests that you can create. The first is called a quick test key. This option is really, really good if you have a hard copy of the test and you're not really interested in actually creating or recreating the test in Eduphoria. All you want is the kids to just enter the answers online. If you'd like to know how to enter answers online, refer to our first video. If they're just entering the answers online, all you have to do is name the test, select the appropriate grade level, hit next, then you have to pick the curriculum that you're actually teaching. For my example, I'm going to choose 8th grade science. Then if you have a purely multiple choice test, just enter the number of multiple choice questions you have and how many answers are in each multiple choice. And then here you can go ahead and quick key it, and that means just select your correct answers. Once they're selected, hit next again, hit finish and then the test gets created. Now here, there are some options under the general tab where you can actually set the percent satisfactory. Most of the time we set it at 70. And then percent advanced, most of the time that's set at 90. And then you'll wanna to go to the question tab. And under the question tab, there are a couple of different options. It defaults to going A, B, C, D, then G, F, uh, F, G, H, J. If you want it to just be A, B, C, D all the way across, click this alternate button. Once you click that alternate button, it changes everything just to ABCD. If that doesn't bother you, you can keep it, and it'll alternate every other question to uh, the different letters. If you want to add standards, when you hover over a question, you'll notice these three options that pop up. The blue arrows help you change the order of the question. So if I want question three to actually be question two, I hit the up arrow once, it moves it up. And then the green pencil will allow me to actually edit the question. When I edit the question, if you want to actually add the question, you can, but this is the quick key example, so we won't go over that part here. Click on standards, select the teak that this question actually meets, then hit select standard. This step is important. If you don't hit select standard, then, and you just hit finished, the standard won't actually copy over. So I'm gonna click select standard, and then I'm gonna click finish, and then you'll notice the standard has now been added to question number two, which I edited. This is really helpful when you're disaggregating your data for teacher-created tests, because anyone that's going through the data wants to know what their strengths and weaknesses are with particular standards. This is how to create a quick test key. When you're done with this quick test, say you wanna share it with people, Click the share button, and then you can actually search for names. Now, let's go into how to create a actual test with all the questions and answer choices in it. So I'm going to leave this particular test. I'm going to refresh my assessment tab. I'm gonna go down to create a new teacher test. And now I want to create a new blank test. These two options, copying existing test or copying an item bank test, an item bank test is really for like creating a test copied off of like a star test. And then copying an existing test is just to copy a test you have already made. So I'm going to create a new blank test. Next, I'm going to name it. Sample test number two. Pick my grade. Pick my content. Hit finish. Now, same thing under the general tab. I can set my percent satisfactory and set my percent advanced. And then I wanna to go to the question tab. And then there are two ways you can start creating a test. The first and easiest way, but maybe not the most complete way, is to search the item bank. When you search the item bank, you can actually access a bank of questions that the district has sorted by standard. So say I'm actually working on teaching 8.7b. 
I search by standard, and this gives me access to all of the questions we have in the bank for that standard. I can expand this, look at the question. If I like the question, check it, click Add Selected, and it'll put it in my test for me. When I'm done with this window, I can hit Close. There's the question I just selected from the item bank. Now let's say I don't want questions from the item bank. You can delete a question at any time by hovering over, and again, the blue arrows help you rearrange the order. The green arrows, the edit, or the green pencils, the edit. If I want to remove a question, just go to the bottom left of this window, click Remove Question, hit OK, it disappears. Now if I want to actually input my own questions or questions I have from a different resource, I can click Add Question and it props up this drop-down. On the drop-down, there are four different types of questions you can create. A selected response, which is multiple choice, numerical response, which is a number response, a constructed response, which is a short answer. Typically, the students would write a paragraph describing something, and that one is teacher graded. And then a resource, and a resource is just a picture that would apply to multiple questions at one time. So I'm going to just show you a selected response. You can explore the others pretty easily. They work very similarly. Right here, where it says enter question text, you'll type your question. Question number one. I guess a question would have a question mark. And then you'll type in your responses. Answer A answer B, and so on. Select the correct answer by clicking the radio button. You can change it at any time if you need to. You can also rearrange the order of the answers by clicking and holding the blue arrows. You can eliminate an answer. Say it's a true-false question. I can eliminate answers by clicking the red X next to an answer choice and limit it down to two. Say it's a five answer choice. I can click the green plus after typing another answer in, and then it'll add that as an extra answer choice. So you can do that and get however many responses you feel are necessary for that question. Once you've written the question, you can do some minor editing with some of these tools up at the top, including bold, italicized, those kinds of things, but you can also insert a picture. Inserting a picture is as easy as going and copying it onto your clipboard and then pasting it wherever it would go. I just pasted a URL, but it would work the exact same way a picture would go in. Go to Options. In Options, if you want to play with the format, this is a good way to do that. You can make the question just half width or full width on the page. You can decrease or increase the amount of spacing between questions, and I'll let you tinker with some of the others if you're interested, but those are the two most important ones. And then go to standards. Pick the standard that that question addresses. Again, select standard is an important button. If you don't hit this button, it won't actually select the standard. And then voila, your question's done, hit finished. And as you can see, the question will populate. It might take a moment or two for it to actually show up, but once it does, the question's ready to go. So that's my question one. Do the SARA process again for question two. Click Add Question. It gives you a little drop down. Choose the type of question you'd like to create. I'll show you numerical response just real fast. Type your question in. Then enter the answer as the number should go exactly the way you want the students to enter it. Um, in this case, I want the answer to be 5.15, so the correct response is 5.15. Go into Options on Numeric, and there are a couple of things. If you're elementary, you probably want to keep a fixed decimal point. If you are secondary, you probably want to go to a floating decimal point. This mirrors the way they do it on the STAR test. And you can define how many decimal points if you have a fixed decimal point, how many places. And then uh, you can allow or not allow negative values. Once you're set, select your standard. Hit finished. And then the question pops up right here. And it shows you what the correct answer is down on the bottom right. Once you're completely finished testing, go to the Advanced tab and just double check your settings real quick. If you want an online test, you can actually allow for a calculator um, that's embedded. You can actually allow for a calculator that's embedded. Um, and then testing style, interactive means you're online. Bubble sheets only means you only intend on printing bubble sheets and letting the kids do bubble sheets. So just make sure that's selected. And then make sure this says active. If it says archived, it didn't delete the test. It just means the test won't be active and you can't actually do anything with it. Just make sure it says active on your side. Active is the default and it can't do anything else. If you're really feeling wild, you can try the beta version of this. 
The beta version is just a little bit quirky right now, um, but uh, if you want to explore that, I'll let you do that on your own. Again, if you have any questions, shoot an email to jwagner at lcsd.net or to uh, help at lcsd.net. If you found this video helpful, make sure and hit that like button. To make sure you get more videos like this, be sure to click right here to subscribe and to click the bell to make sure you get notifications. If you'd like to submit a topic or concept for future videos, there's a link in the description down below. And if you're looking for more digital learning tips and tricks, make sure to follow us on Twitter.